Oh, bienvenue à Wee Nutter. Je m'appelle Marc et elle s'appelle... Jenny Steele. <laughs> <laughs> you, you got that much, did you? Yeah. Yeah, got a, got a little bit French because apologies, dear listener, but we haven't been with you for the last two weeks. No. Uh, because we took Miss Jenny on our first ever foreign holiday. Mm, we did. Are you going to tell us about it now or are you going to hold on and tell us about it later? I might hold on and tell you about <gasps> it later. Da, da, da. That is called selling a hell ahead or yeah. something like that, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, like that. Try, try to get you anticipated, dear listener, about the sort of thing that's going to be coming up in this mm. fight episode. We are joining you on the week that we also encountered our first nudist. Oh, we did, didn't we? Because we live a very sheltered life. This did not happen in foreign climes. It happened here in Britain. And as a fat bloke, I, I can't even bring myself to go tap off, as it's called. What's that? Tap off? You don't know what tap off is. No. Ta- tap oh, right. off. Tap off. off. Oh, right. It's a way of saying to- tops off. Tops off. Anything above about 20 degrees, it seems to happen in uh, northern, northern parts of this fine country, dear listener. I was more worried about the ticks. I mean, I'm stressing now when I go out fully clothes. I mean, those tits could land anywhere. Yeah. Although, fair enough, people are allowed to be natri- naturist, whatever they're called. Mm. You know, it, it is allowed in this fine country. But if there was ever a good reason to bring in rules or laws that say you must wear clothing, mm. it's got to be Skeg Beach in the height of summer <laughs> yeah. with all the fat middle-aged blokes look a bit like me taking their tops off. What about the women? Yeah, that, that, yeah, I don't even want to think about it. I, I, I'm horrified enough by the blokes doing it. <laughs> women get involved as well. Although on a slightly different topic, but like when you come back to work after a long weekend, mm. we are in that phase, dear listener, where we try to remember what we do on this fine podcast, the wee natter. Yeah. Yeah. But apparently they're starting to do a post bag. Yeah. yeah. And it has arrived. Ace. Which means we open it. Mm. Is that what we do? Yeah, we open you know, it. We, we have we, a look we open, inside. We open the post bag. And uh, last time, which feels like eons ago, we mm. asked you what mad crazes you remember. And Matthew Summers has been in touch, Great. saying he's a similar age to me. Not a similar age to himself, but a similar age to Mark. <laughs> that would sound weird if I said Mark out there, wouldn't it? <laughs> you, you know what I mean. Yeah. So it was Yo-Yo's at his school, and the first Mortal Kombat game, which parents said would turn us all into psychotic maniacs. Mortal Kombat. Is that the one that they had the spinning, spinning birdcage on and Sub-Zero? I think it might have had some zero and Johnny Cash and things like that. In Johnny well. Cash, Johnny Cash went in some zero. I mean, Mortal Kombat. There, there, you... there was just this, there was all these weird, you know, like ninjas and monsters and things like that. And there was just some random bloke that wore sunglasses, if I remember correctly. Oh, it's, it's been years, I'll admit. But, uh, Matthew was saying he didn't turn into a maniac, but he was stressed yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the first one, Mortal Kombat game. I think that was the one where he used to go fatality. No, why not the finish him? Finish him. There might have been. The Chinese music in the background. There might have been. It's been so long since I played sure those they games. Said finish him. But like any of those games, I just randomly bash buttons. It's a bit like playing FIFA. Yeah. I have no idea. Never, because it was always at a friend's house I'd be playing these games, and the same with FIFA as well. Mm. So I didn't know any of the combos, what I was doing, anything like that. I was just literally bashing the kick and jump buttons and hoping for the best. And even the cheat options, where you, uh, I couldn't fathom Max. you got to be quick, can't you? you got to be quick on the A, the B, quick. Press A, A, B, B, C, up. Yeah, it was usually some... And I'm lost. You have to sit there with a manual in front of you to play it. It was, it was strange, but I, I, I understand why people enjoyed them. Because you get skill and you learn it. And and yes, I, th- I think Mortal Kombat was the one with the blood in it, if I remember correctly. No, you could actually have it with or without the blood. Mm. I remember that. You could turn the blood off if you didn't want to have the blood. I think on some consoles it was a cheat code, wasn't it? They could turn the blood on, on and off or something like that. It might have been. It's my nephew, he had it, and he was telling me all this stuff. But you can't beat Sonic the Hedgehog, can you? <laughs> now, you see, Sonic's another one I never get, <laughs> got on with dealers now. Because it's too fast. I, I, I can I, I can never... Yeah, I was all right on that one. I could just about follow Super Mario. And I'm talking yeah, like the, the I original... Can't, I the, can't stay on the track. The, the original one that came on the Nintendo console, the one that you actually opened the front flap and put the cartridge oh, in. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah I, could, I could follow that. I could play Super Mario, but Sonic, it was just too fast for me. I couldn't keep up with it. I only got it. to level three, and then it got a little bit too much, but... Yeah, I got to about level two on Mario, and then it got a bit too much. So on that <laughs> note... I think we ought to have a deal. Uh, uh, but, but, but I think we ought to have a wee natter. No slap ups this week. No, no slap ups this week. I don't know why I channeled one of the Ronnies at that moment when I ah. stumbled over my word. Did anyone else do that? 
we start going da 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 like um, <laughs> it's Ronnie, that's hot cry isn't it was, was it Ronnie Barker or Ronnie uh, Ronnie Barker Corbett it was Ronnie Barker Ronnie Corbett was a little one Ronnie Barker was it open all hours and porridge that's the one and yeah. on that note I think we ought to have <laughs> a wee nuts <laughs> Is it just me, or does, to put it in a sort of kind way of wording it, becoming more experienced lead to becoming more crotchety? Why? In what way? You know, like you're getting older. Is it just a me thing? No, I don't think it is. No, because I, I work in tech dealers, and I, mm. you know, I work with technology. And the ancients, which is the way I would describe the people that have been in the industry even longer than I have mm. now, you know, we're talking 20 plus years on top of what I'm doing, the ancients with their thick grey beards, they look like monks in Megadeth t-shirts. You know the sort of look yeah. I'm thinking about here? Yeah, server man in um, the IT crowd. Is that right? Server man? Remember server man? Server man? No, he, he didn't have a little jingle like that. I don't know why he went <laughs> to that. But I know what you're doing. Yeah, into Cradle of Filth or whatever Something it was. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was on Nevermind the Buzzcocks, I think, as well. I can't think of his name, but I can it's see his face. A blokey that was in Mighty Bush, which I never... I hate to miss. I didn't... I'm not a big fan of weird out there comedy. I, I just find it a bit... I can, I can see the joke they're making, but it's mm. like... Nah, it's, it's not actually making me laugh. I, I never actually laughed at the Mighty Bush. I've never seen the Mighty Bush. Oh, I've just you see. seen the IT crowd. And I like IT that. Crowd. Yeah, there you go. But, uh, you know, some, some of the ancients, they're brilliant. Others, uh, it's certainly an alarming number, the ones I've worked with in the past, make Victor Meldrew look like a cheaty chap. Yeah. You know the sort of thing I'm on about here, don't you, yeah. Dillison? And don't you, Jenny, as well? And I'm seeing myself falling into this trap as I get older mm. and becoming more crotchety, more angry. As an example, I used to give a lot of leeway when somebody did a poor job, you know, like make a ba- bad coffee or write a bad report, you know, something like that. You know, when you half arsed your job. Yeah. I, I used to I used to give a lot of leeway to that. Nowadays, if I see somebody half arsing something, it releases the fury of a thousand terrier dogs. Mm. And on that note, is, is, is that good enough? Can we go home yet? <laughs> coffee break? But on this topic... Is there anything you dislike more as you get older? Um, Not I'm saying you're older, but as the years have passed on, is there something you've gone, you know what, I just hate that more and more and more. Because for me, it is doing a half-hour job. People. (laughs) Just people in general, the existence Uh, of people. Screaming kids. Oh, you're hating kids more now that you're older? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you know the ones that just sit and cry and have the the tantrums and they Mm. always seem to be where you are, whether you're sitting down somewhere or walking somewhere, and they seem to never be taken away from the situation. Mm. That I think I'm getting less tolerant with kids and less tolerant with cyclists, although I've never been tolerant with cyclists. Have you tried being a cyclist? No. Do you think that would change your opinion no. on the world? <laughs> well, there's only one way to find out. Uh, so we're going to open it up to you, dear listener. Is there anything you dislike more as you've been getting older, as the years have passed on? It could be people on your lawn, it could be modern technology, or even those pencil neck desk jockeys at the council. Whatever it is that you're getting more angry about as the years go on, we want to hear about it. If you're on Spotify, the question has popped up as part of this episode. You can tap mm-hmm. it, stick your answer in there. Or on the socials at Solid Radio UK, at Solid City, and tell us about that, and we will find out what's winding you up in the next episode. <laughs> This is going to be really difficult, but I want you to imagine you are in a pub, dear listener, and you, Jenny, as well, are mm. in a pub. You walk up to order your double-strength tramp juice. The bartender says hello and then follows with a word to describe you, like mate or hen or something like that. How, how would you feel about that? It calls me a hen. You, call, you know, hello, mate, L O N. you know, some sort of term yeah, of endearment. I don't you know, think I'm I think it's not, all right, bitch, or anything like that. Well, there's a good question. Which words would you be happy with and which words would you not be happy with? You know, I've got a couple of examples here, but, you know, if you've got any that specifically wind you up or don't... Off the top I don't of your like Ms. I think that makes you sound like an old spinster. Ms. Oh, the not assuming whether you're married or not, yeah, Ms. I don't like that, Ms. And I don't like when your phone call sends they call you ma'am. I'm not anybody's ma'am. What about madam? I don't like that either. That's like a lady of the night, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one off my list there then. Uh, how about love? All right, love. Hello, love. What are you ordering? Yeah, I don't mind that. You don't mind that. Mm. All right, chick. What are you ordering? Chick. 
Honey is a bit of an irritating one and all, isn't it? When Honey. Everybody calls people, oh, I hate it when people call each other babe. All right, babe. Every every car- sentence ends with the word babe. You're like, oh, come on. As in pig in the city. You're like, oh, babe, are you going to make a cup of tea, babe? All right, babe. All right, it's just irritating. I can only imagine that word being said in that way with a very specific accent and it comes from the east of England somewhere towards London. Essex. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I, I, now I hear people around here saying it. Talk about it. You're just, you're just said. Maybe they don't know they're saying it. Well, I, I suppose it's, a, it's similar to darling, isn't it? Hello, darling. Would you? What, what you yeah, want? Yeah, maybe babe's the new um, darling. I don't know. So, so if, if the barman called you babe or darling, would you be happy with it? No, I don't think so. I think that's a bit too forward, isn't it? And my final one, Prince of the Universe. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Just thought I'd get a song lyric in. <laughs> um, the reason I'm asking it all of this, and there is some genuine thought behind this, dear listener, is that I heard of a barman calling mm. somebody mate, right? Yeah. Then getting into trouble for it, like proper chewed out by their manager. Is there any name that you could be called by said barman that would, that would warrant a proper chewing out um. in front of customers? Yeah, there was something I mentioned, like Madam and yeah. Ms and Babe and Hun. Yeah, I, I think you're onto something there. Although, on a slightly different topic, I, I did hear somebody getting upset at being called Sir. Mm-hmm. And they said, yeah. you know, like when you check in a hotel, you know, uh, and what's your name, Sir? Because they need, they need yeah. to f- find your reservation and work Bonjour. it all and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there is one line that when you hear somebody blast it back, it is a dead giveaway that they have been in the military at some point. Ma'am. No, it's not ma'am. It's, I'm not, sir, I work for a living. Oh. Usually with somebody that wasn't an officer in the military and things like that. I've heard that line so many Every time I hear that line, it's from somebody that has some sort of military history in them. Mm. In them. Although I suppose it's better than I'm a woman that I got back when I called somebody sir. Uh, at Comet once. Did you? It was also the same day I learned it's very hard to hide in a bright orange (laughs) t-shirt. I come bearing bad news, Jenny. Oh no. And for you dear listener as well, I I would suggest we light a candle in remembrance for this one. It is uh, quite quite, quite serious bad news. There's a bus service that's going to stop running. It's it's not not the bus I catch, is it? It is not the bus that's (laughs) going to catch. (laughs) I know it's bit, bit, this is very big news deal, <laughs> listener. I mean, how are you going to cope with a bus not running that you don't catch? Uh, I'll come back to that one. <laughs> probably, probably the same as everywhere else where it happens. But yeah. it, this bus, it's a big deal. Yeah. It's, it's a big deal for a reason. It's the bus to where, do you think? Why would it be a big deal? Where, where do you think this bus is going? Town. It's not going to town. London. It's not going to London. I oh, know then. It's going to hell. Oh. It's a nice place in Poland, not far from Gdansk, <laughs> uh, but it apparently has a hotel, supermarket, and even a car park, according to Google Maps. So, well, worth a visit. You could take the bus uh, to hell. Well, you can't anymore because they're going to be stopped running it. Is that what Chris Rea was talking about? This is the road to hell? Quite possibly. Because I thought it was on the M25 he was talking about. Now I'm not so sure anymore. Yeah, because he, he might have been behind the bus. He'd have to be in front of the bus to be able to see where the bus is going because if you're behind the bus you you can see the route number but you can't see where it's going going. although that said what do you think the route number for this bus is 66 it's not 66 666 it is 666 yeah I'm not making that up that is genuinely true you'd have to wouldn't you somebody in this Polish bus company has gone you know what it's the the bus to hell we're going to call it 666 I've got to give them points for that one but it does mean that unfortunately we are going to have to book our wee natter tour somewhere else (laughs) yeah so I've been thinking of a few other locations we can try out instead. Uh, one of them is Boring, a place called Boring, in Oregon, <laughs> uh, over in the United States. Uh, or maybe we could do a, an episode from Dull in the Highlands. Mm-hmm. And then there's always Clown up the road from us. <laughs> yeah, we could, we could go to the Clown Show just around the corner here. And, well, I was going to say Noise Road, but Clown's in Derbyshire. It is, Derbyshire, yeah. It, it is over the border, so yeah. we, we, we will have to go undercover. <laughs> So we don't get caught out and they, they, tr- they figure out we're from Nottinghamshire. <laughs> but I am going to open this up to you, dear listener, right? What do you think about the idea of a wee natter on the road where we tour around some places, take you with us, and Jenny 
gives her unfiltered opinion about everything that's going on. <laughs> yeah, and, you might not want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to promise anything too exciting, but I'm, I'm sure we could kick off strong with a first episode about yeah. uh, the Bude Tunnel. <laughs> you heard of that one? Uh, no, I haven't. No. Do you remember when supermarkets used to build, like, trolley shelters, mm. but they put a bunch of them together like it was a tunnel? Oh, like right. a really long... Yeah, that's Bude Tunnel. It's even got TripAdvisor ratings, five stars on it. Really? Yeah, yeah. Apparently you could, you could get an entire family day out. A Bude Tunnel. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, but I've been hearing a lot recently about artificial intelligence or AI. Yeah. You heard a bit about AI I have, recently? yeah. Probably yeah. in the news, wasn't it? Yeah, in the yeah, news. Yeah, yeah. And how it's going to rule the world. Yeah. That's usually what they're saying and what they're worried it about. It take over this show, will it? Well, it's going to take over office jobs, so, you know, it's n- not impossible. It could probably do a better job than me. <laughs> uh, oh, and um, the other thing I'll end up doing, it'll be, it'll be a robot that'll decide how much to screw you over for your car insurance. That, oh, that will yeah. happen at some yeah. point. We know it's coming. So do you think there are any areas that AI won't take over? Well, they can't do... Well, I don't know. I was going to say they can't do operations, can they? So, like, surgeons, consultants might be all right, but I don't know now. You can always... You can get a keyhole with a robot arm, can't you? You can. The technology mm. already exists to be able to do operations where the doctor is not even in the same country. Mm. So, letting the computer take over, it doesn't sound impossible. No. But how about religion? Do you think AI yeah, can take over religion? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a hologram priest. Well, you turn up to the church and there's not a priest, but instead there is an old computer with one of those deep old monsters, you know the ones I want about with the thick backs to them that stick out and weigh a ton, and it's got a little dog collar around. I have a dog collar on. It's got a dog collar around the monster stand when it's sitting on top of the unit. Uh, green text glows as a robotic voice reads out a sermon. Would you go? I don't think I would, no. No, the reason I ask... Is that something like that really, genuine? not making this up, went down in Germany recently. How many people do you think attended this AI? Emily was written, it wasn't mm. delivered by AI. But how many people do you think turned up to an AI sermon? Yeah, I want to say something really low, like five, but then I'm thinking that's going to be ridiculous, like 250. You're too low, it's three, over 300 people oh, turned wow. up to the ceremony in, ceremony in Germany written by a computer. There you go. So tune in next week when we reveal the marital duties that AI will be taking <laughs> yeah, over. Yeah. And sadly for you, dear listener, that includes getting drunk watching MasterChef. It can't taste stuff. <laughs> well, it could lie about tasting stuff. Yeah, but we don't lie to our listeners. So when we do like the mince pie challenge and the hot cross bun challenge, there ain't no AI taking over that. Ah. Is this you pitching for you know an upcoming food yeah. challenge, food what comparison? Could that be? Have you got any ideas? No, we come, well, we're in summer now, aren't we? So maybe the best ice cream or... Um, hmm. So you're going to go to every ice cream shop up and down the country, stuff your face yeah, and see like what Yeah, like Ben and Jerry's, Mr Whippy, uh, whoever makes fabs. I like a fab. But what about all these, you know, little... I, I don't. I, you can't really call them ice cream breweries, but you know the sort of... parlours. Not, not just the parlours, but the places where, like, you get... I was about to say the juice out of the goat or the cow, but, you know, the yeah. milk out yeah. of the goat or the cow yeah. is made on the farm. Yeah. They do it all there and you get yeah, the ice cream. Yeah, try that. Yeah, it's that they'll have us for free so we don't have to pay for all, for everything. I don't think you'll get it for free because <laughs> then you're just pitching for free ice cream for the summer. I don't think that works, <laughs> but it, it's an idea. Mm. We'll see how see what happens there, listener. We said we'd come back and talk about our holiday to the south of France, didn't we? We, 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 which is about the extent of my French. Admittedly, no, no, no. I do have a, a technically have a qualification in French. I remember one word, and it's a really good word because it's a place I like to visit, and it is boulangerie. Boulangerie. So, where's the? I don't know how you say where is the, but I know boulangerie. Où est la boulangerie? Où est la boulangerie? I think it is. Uh, admittedly. Like I said, I technically got a standard grade in French <laughs> almost 20 years ago now, so it's not a surprise that you know, I've been using Duolingo or whatever to try and learn it. And, and Issy is here, isn't it? I remember that. I remember Issy and Chat. I kept pronouncing the T in cat. Chat. It's not Chat, it's Chat. <laughs> I kept saying Chat everywhere. <laughs> yes. But anyway, you, 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 went on, you went on your foreign jollies down yeah. to the south of France. Yeah. Jo- 
purely look, traveling from Boulangerie to Boulangerie. Yeah, <laughs> and a bit of Boulangerie on the plane. And then it uh, just a little bit is how we got we got mm. there an hour late, didn't we? Because flight was delayed by an hour. Well, that is the joy of budget airlines and flying yeah. late in the day. Yeah, there's always going to be some delay. You never travel on time. It's just it's just the reality. Yeah. Of it, it was, but we thought we'd done a bit well with the French, didn't we? Because we'd been mm. learning, Mark, you more than me. We've been learning on, on the app. And because uh, we get there, we were going to do a uh, higher car, and we get there about midnight after we'd done passport control mm. and whatever, and the place is shut, isn't it? So we're stranded in the middle of uh, uh, France, and we're like, we don't know, we need to get a taxi, and there was just like no taxis anywhere. And this guy turned up, didn't he? And he got the few people at the front of the queue in his taxi, and we were all going, uh, is there any more like taxis? And he was talking French on the phone to whoever and we couldn't, I couldn't really make out what was going mm. on and then he mm. disappeared and we were all sort of waiting around and we eventually did get a taxi to the hotel because you got an Uber, didn't you? Yeah, yes. I just want to say, those French drivers, is it in Marseille? I always get this wrong, is it Marseille or Marseille? Marseille. Marseille. I, I was gripping onto that back seat for dear life. I've never known such driving in, in, in a long, long time. They were just like flying everywhere, weren't they? Of course, obviously it's <laughs> drive to the um, to, to to the left, isn't it? To the left. That they're on the right hand side of the road. On the right hand side of the road, but the steering wheels on, the, on left. the left. So that was freaking me out as well. So when like you're bombing down on the motorway and they're, they're sliding in like on, on like your right hand side, and I'm gripping the seat like they're not going to stop, they're not going to stop, and you got motorbikes swerving in and out, and I thought. I don't know if I was going to make it to that hotel, but um, yeah, the driving was. Whew. We get to the hotel, and the hotel weren't good, was it, Mark? The well, hotel wasn't good. You're picking apart the driving, but to be fair, Marseille is it, it's Mediterranean. It's a nice place, but it is the Birmingham of France. Oh. It is the second city. There's, it's got a lot going for it. Mm. It's got about as much concrete as Birmingham <laughs> has yeah, as well. Yeah. But when you've got numbers like that, the driving just goes out the window. And it's the same in this country as well. If you go driving in Birmingham, especially central Birmingham, when mm. you go driving in central London, it is just everyone for themselves, good luck. If you make it out with your car in one piece, everyone's a winner. That's that's just what yeah, happens in big cities. But- and the, the, I guess another bit is the, the, the attitudes, in, is, especially in France and Spain and things like that, and Italy, is, yes, there are people that are quite precious about their cars, but mm. it's far less common than here, where we're all precious about our cars and the slightest yeah. thing it's the end of the world. There's people going down the road with well, half the side Every missing. Every other car like had a dent but in it and a wing mirror hanging off. I, I kind of like that attitude about owning a car. You know, oh, well, it's, it's, it's utility. I was petrified every time we went out <laughs> in the car. I didn't want to go out in the car anymore because we had to go back the next day to pick up the car, didn't we? Yes. And the funny part was we kind of said, oh, it should it have been today? And we are like, no, it should have been yesterday, but by the time we got here, you closed. Mm. And the people that we booked it with had booked it in for 10 a.m., the the day before, but we didn't even leave East Midlands Airport until half past ten at night. <laughs> so we ended up paying a hundred pound for another car, didn't we? Because it was a little upgrade on a Fiat five hundred. I'm not sure what the upgrade was there, but apparently that was an upgrade. Well, it's, but, it's because I had originally booked a Renault Clio. Well, Clio all right. A, a Renault Clio. I, I thought I'd go for a native car. You yeah. come to France, and uh, yeah, it was uh, the Fiat, Fiat big the big Fiat five hundred. Yeah. It was all that, but mm. it was just the driving. It was just like, even the <laughs> motorbikes are whizzing, beeping you to get out of the way. And then zebra crossings, uh, they it, didn't stop on zebra crossings for me, even though it was my time to go. They, they were still whizzing around me on the zebra crossings. You say this as if you've never seen a, a um, food delivery driver in Oh, uh, man, in I couldn't hack it. I really couldn't hack it. <laughs> we were going to go to Nice, weren't we? But that would have been another two hours in the car, and I couldn't. I couldn't cope with it. So the driving, the roads made me an absolute nervous wreck. And the hotel wasn't up to much copy either, was it, unfortunately? Ah, uh, but that's a story for another time. Yeah, that's a story for another time. But I, on the plus side for me, I didn't see any lizards. Lizards? Yes. Were you looking for lizards? Yes, because when I read, when I put in Google, as you do, does uh, south of France have lizards? And it was like, <laughs> oh, yes, very common. You can see them all sunbasking at the edge of, of the, like, pavements and stuff, and they're 
the, the kind of all over the place. Hold on like, a minute. Oh, oh no. Hold on a minute. So no. the, the, the question I have to ask you is, what prompted you to even start that search in the first place? Because I was watching Just, Just Good Friends and they was in Spain and they went back to their room and there was a massive lizard in the room and I thought, oh, I wonder if there's lizards in France. There's lizards in the UK. I don't see them though, but they said they were really common. So I, I just assumed I was going to see them like you see a dog. You know, old dogs are all over the shop. I thought that's how the lizards was going to be, but well, I didn't see them. Hang on, you see dogs are all over the shop. They're, they're not like they're everywhere in the UK. You know, you're just walking around, they suddenly I pop out like of a are. bush. No, no, they're just they're, they're gen- them. People generally take them for a walk well, on leads. I mean, we yeah. expect to be able to do that with lizards no, in the south of France. I just thought everywhere, every time I see a dog, which is quite a lot, I thought that's how many times I was going to see lizards. I thought they were just going to be hanging around on a rock, you know, just sunbathing everywhere and... But to be fair, that lizard would just be doing what you were planning on doing for your holiday. So I, 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 and the I, sea was beautiful colour. Yeah, but so it was I've, freezing. Well, that, that's what the sea does. I've I've never seen a warm sea in my life at anywhere in the world. Anyway, I was practicing the taxi driver. I was impressed with your with your knowledge. What je m'appelle Mark? Je m'appelle. Don't you ask for a taxi? <laughs> you said something. You know, you said a little bit more though, didn't you? Uh, it, it, it was. It, as, like I said, even though I had technically have a qualification French, which I'm very odd here, I haven't used it since. And I've been doing we need one of Sutty's friends to, to teach us. I was the Del boy over there, wasn't I? Everything, mon, everything was Monge too, wasn't it? Ah, Monge too. But I know Bonjour. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you points for that. What's well, good night then? Uh, bon oui. Bon oui, see? I remember Bon oui and Bonjour and um other little bits and bobs but not enough to put a sentence together unfortunately but you still got asked for directions didn't you yes like you do in this country all the time yeah i am just one of those people the listener that doesn't matter where to go i could have never been there before in my puff all right i am literally standing there with like an os map or a google maps or whatever in front of me and looking at road signs working my way and somebody will ask me for directions you did twice you got stopped to ask for the beach yeah so i had somebody asking you know in french directions to la plage the beach la plage yeah i'm trying to i'm i I use my left and my right (laughs) but i didn't know how to say go down the road a bit and it's on your right yeah what did you say i can't remember i I ended up pointing and say a dra a dra (laughs) 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 they they got the they got the point that was that was important and you you got to do the other thing you always get to do here as well when you're in a supermarket but is it the carry four yeah, yeah. We, we, we walked into Cali 4 just because it was closer to us than the Musketeers were. <laughs> um, and we're, we're in getting some sandwiches or whatever it was. And there's a, this little old chap. And uh, well, I, I only picked up the odd word, but I got very much from the, the pointing of his stick towards the top shelf that yeah. he wanted whatever was on it. <laughs> so, yes, I, I did oblige to my duties internationally to deliver. <laughs> Whatever's on the top shelf down to people who cannot reach yeah, the top yeah. shelf. So it's like home from home, really, wasn't it? Yeah, it, was, it was a busman's holiday, that's what <laughs> it is. That was, unfortunately, a wee natter. I was Mark Steele, and Chris Stable from me was... Je m'appelle Jen Meister. Something like that. <laughs> I could only apologise, n- not for your... Attempts at French, you know, fair enough for trying to learn a language of, of, of a fellow country nearby in Europe. It, it makes sense. <laughs> oh, well, I guess your other options would be to learn Gaelic or Irish or something like that. And, you know. I'd love to be well fluent and then just shock everybody as I just came out with it. Well, you know what you've got to do. It's, it's a lot of work. I am not going to stop you. But one thing I will ask you to do to your listeners, if you enjoyed this fine episode and you haven't done so already, get into your podcatcher. Find that subscribe button and make sure you hit subscribe on a wee natter and you will get this fine podcast delivered every time it gets released straight to your luggles. Belongerie. It does not go to I the belongerie. I just love that word. <laughs> it goes straight to your lug holes. And the other things we're going to ask you to do, dear sir, is when you're out and about and you're going about your normal life, so uh, we've been picking a different profession every week that you've got to inform. <laughs> yeah. as you're going about. This week, you need to inform your tourniquet dealer who? Uh, your tourniquet dealer. What's a tourniquet? It's that thing you used to cut off blood when you... Uh, oh, tourniquet. Tourniquet, yeah. That's the word. Tourniquet dealer. Tourniquet, yeah. <laughs> I've heard it pronounced both ways. You, you, get, you get an important point. You, you, get, you get to your dealer, they're showing you the range, and you go, 
that's grand. I'll go for that one. Oh, and by the way, a wee night on your podcast. Yeah. Make sure you do that. I guess we'll catch you next time. Bye. <laughs> Bonjour.